Today I'm going to repair my Model F keyboard from my IBM 5155. I use this keyboard as a daily driver um, and it uh, got water damaged at work when we had a flood where one of the drains in the roof overflowed and uh, a lot of water came inside and uh, roof uh, ceiling tiles to sort of turn to mush and fell down onto the keyboard and there was a bit of water uh, damage there so I thought I would pull it apart and um, give it a good clean out make sure there's uh, you know no serious sort of corrosion or anything happening and if there is any corrosion whatsoever just clean it up and um, get it back together so that's the plan for today I quite like the the Model F. I actually prefer the feel over the Model M. Um, you, it's hard to tell the difference straight away, but it, there's a subtle difference. This keyboard is crisper than the Model M. Um, I, I use a Model M as well, and I really like the Model M. But it t does take a little bit of time to get used to the layout. It's quite different with your shift key here. They're quite small shift keys. Um, the enter key is a lot smaller too and um, yeah just general layout is quite different with control up here and alt key down here caps lock over here uh, there's no directional cursor keys and you've also got your built-in uh, numpad here with no sort of space in between so quite a different layout to the um, Model M keyboards, or your standard keyboards, but yeah, really nice, uh, crisp keyboard. It's a little bit loud, it's not too bad. Um, probably about the same as the Model M, but with a slightly higher pitch, I think. So, yeah, I'll do a comparison with them side by side anyway. And uh, yeah, so let's get this thing apart and see what it's like inside. So I'll start by removing the keycaps here. I use a little uh, keycap removal tool, keycap puller. You just uh, slot the tool over the key, hook it underneath, and just pull straight up. And there's the keycap there. So I'll go ahead and remove all of the keys and then we can start taking the keyboard apart as well because I do want to clean these keys, they're not overly dirty but I might as well clean them while I've got them out that's the keycaps removed apart from the spacebar which has got a stabilizing spring uh, underneath so I need to get to that from the bottom um, so I'll just uh, remove this uh, top casing here now I've got to be very careful because the little latch, uh, plastic latches, are there's actually cracking along the um, top here. So those latches aren't going to, um, you know, I'd have to be very careful not to break those off. You can see them split, it's splitting there where it's been strained. So um, I find the best way to get those off is just a thin piece of uh, metal, even just a, a knife um, to lever those just slightly. Yeah, I find a knife works quite well for this. Um, so just very gently, there's you can actually see the little gaps in the top here. So just gently push that you might be able to see the cracking just there so these are quite fragile so I just need to very carefully ease, ease these up I think that's got it And then 
I can disconnect this Sora's converter here. So the original connection into the IBM 5155 is this little RJ11 type uh, plug here. So on the Sora's converter what I've done is this is a little bit temporary, I'll probably fix this up a bit better. I've got an um, RJ45 to RJ45 extender socket both sides and um, the RJ11 will just fit nicely into the RJ45 socket. So I've just used the uh, wires here from the Ethernet cable just to break out the wires, uh, the connections here from the Teensy and um, also hacked in a couple of LEDs with the numlock and the caps lock there. So um, just sort of a temporary thing to make sure it was all working really. I'll do something better with that later. So now we've got this cable here comes through a little slot cut out here. It might be easier to see once we get the cable out, um, once we get the board out here, the main board, and you'll see a screw there and another one on the other side. So get those two out. Just a flat screwdriver. Should be able to lift the keyboard. This front of the keyboard should lift out, should lift straight up like that, and then just pull out like so. Really nice and easy to service this, you know. The, Here's the base. So you can see the little um, flip out, spring loaded flip out legs there. And it's to raise your the back of your keyboard. And these two at the front little spring loaded clips here just clip the keyboard into the um, 5155 and that actually acts as the base of the machine so when you're when it's in portability mode right now uh, so what we need to do now is remove these this cable here so if we have a look under here we've got a grounding strap onto the board here so that's probably looks like about a six six millimeter. Oh six millimeter. I mean this is IBM, isn't it? Made in the USA, it's gotta be quarter inch. Yeah, quarter yeah, looks like yep. Yeah, quarter inch. that strap off there and then just uh, undo these clips and that should just pull straight out and it's keyed at the bottom there so there's a, a key that goes into the slot here so what do we got we've got model F uh, part number four five Eight that looks handwritten six one six one now that almost 
looks like that was a 9 originally printed on there and someone's gone over it in pen with an 8 EC number, not sure exactly what that is, 339716 some signatures there, tested, inspection, final inspection uh, merge, not quite sure what that is, card to base that'll be this card here I guess and um, shop date not quite sure that doesn't seem to relate to any date but anyway uh, the next the next step is to looks like remove this base here ah oh, yeah they look like they slide with a little latch so it looks like I have to slide the whole base this way that way to uh, detach these little lugs there's two four five on one side and two five on the other and that one Actually, that one looks like it's been bent, bent out slightly compared to the rest of them. So that's not actually engaged as such. But I think if I just um, apply pressure to the base, it should just slide. This is the contact board. I can see a little bit of um, sort of rusty oxidization there. That's probably from uh, the springs, maybe, all the way along here. So I'll need to give this uh, contact board a, a clean. I'll clean that with isopropyl alcohol. Uh, you can see how it's clipped in here to this base, this metal base. It's just slid. Um, so if I actually slid this contact board across uh, this way, these would pop out of the little locators here, and um, we'd actually get be able to remove the board. So very nice uh, construction for repair and maintenance. I like that. Anyway, here's the um, the underside, and there's a lot of these little carbon. Looks like carbon um, paddles, as such, and the springs are attached to the carbon paddle. Okay, so there's a bit of rust on this one. Yeah. It's quite rusty there. I'm assuming, yeah. So what I might do is just take all of these apart and um, clean up the rust from this spring here and also from the actual paddle there too so yeah that'll be a time consuming job but um, I'm quite keen to get this all cleaned up and working again and the here's the spring mechanism for the keyboard uh, for the space bar So that looks like it just uh, flips out. Might remove these paddles first just in case they 
decide to try and es or escape while I'm doing this. These here look, uh, the, the actual guides look as though they're, well they are, all individual uh, mouldings that have just been pressed into this uh, plastic, oh no this metal, is that metal? Yeah this metal uh, chassis here is holding these plastic mouldings here. So yeah, really modular um, construction, which is great for servicing, as I say. So, next step will be removing all of the springs. Some of them probably don't actually need to be removed. That one's looking fairly clean. So I'll go through and um, remove the rusty springs, get those cleaned up and reattached. And now these contacts here are quite, some of them are quite rusty where the water's got in under the spring. So I've just got a little bit of water here in a, uh, an old toothbrush, just a very, very dilute uh, cleaning fluid in there and just gently clean that little post where the spring sits and that cleans up quite well. And there we go. reasonably well cleaned up, a little bit dirty still on that side there. That's looking a lot better there now. So that's just ready for a, a, uh, a quick wipe to clean the contact underneath there. So I'll go through the rest of those and clean those up. Got a bunch there. And as for the springs, a little bit rusty. So I'm just going to use a little bit of CRC or um, you know otherwise yeah WD-40 or just a penetrating oil just going to dip that in there the rusty side just give that a very gentle brush with a, a little wire brush here and that should clean up that rust there and let's have a wee look at that. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. So I'll go ahead and uh, do that with all the springs and the contacts there. They cleaned up okay. There's the contact and the spring there. So I've just put together the springs and the contacts and I just give that a very slight uh, anti-clockwise turn and it seems to sort of just thread onto the little post there almost like a, uh, a screw would. And there it goes. Next job is to clean the contact board here just with a bit of 
IPA. This computer has actually survived quite a bit. This is the second sort of um, tragedy. Well, no, second tragedy for the keyboard uh, being involved in the flood. The first tragedy was for the IBM 5155 in itself, along with the keyboard, it was involved in a fire in the office, so we haven't had much luck, and um, I happen to have this computer at work at the time, and the fire started in the kitchen, which is adjacent to my work area, and the fire spread up through the uh, roof space and along above my area, and uh, luckily because of the design of the 5155 its case covers the entire machine and the keyboards at the bottom uh, acting as the base as such and the fire crew um, they were spraying a lot of water around inside up in the roof space and in, in the actual building itself and in the kitchen and um, the IBM came away fairly well unscathed, which I was quite pleased about. Um, it does have a fault where the, the graphics card, uh, the MDA card, monochrome display adapter, is faulty. And I think actually that was because of a leaky battery. Uh, I'm guessing there might have been a real-time clock on there, I'm not quite sure about that, but um, anyway there was quite a bit of corrosion on that card, I couldn't recover it. So I'm keeping an eye out for another one, so I can get the IBM 5155 up and running again. But I use this keyboard as a daily driver, so uh, I was quite keen to get it revived. So this keyboard's been through a fair bit. And it seems to have held up fairly well considering. So that's the uh, contacts cleaned there. I wonder if I can unlatch that. Oh yeah. That's it. So that should just pop out. Ah, there we go. Space bars out. It's quite a bit of um, dusty sort of. That's coming from these this foamy type material that's breaking down. Actually, I'm wondering if this whole thing might just pop off, leaving the mouldings in place, which will make it easy to put back together. So there is the foam type substance there, which is breaking down, but I'm tempted just to leave that. So I'll give this uh, here a clean up. Just going to use a um, general purpose cleaning product for this. So it's looking a lot better now, pretty clean. So let's bring this back in here and just place that back over. Like so. That's all bedded down nicely there. And so that part is nearly ready to mate back. It's set. I now just have to clean these and assemble the springs. So now I have the little army to uh, assemble here now. So let's get to that. So the next thing to do is to just wipe down with a uh, just very slightly damp um, cloth here 
and just give those a little bit of a clean context there. It's looking nice and clean there. And then once that's once I've cleaned all of those, I need to place each one and turn into here. And you can see that the there are little hinges as such. So these little edge pieces act as little hinges and they sit in here and the hinges locate into these little recesses either side there and they just sit like so. Well when the base is put on it captures uh, the little contact in there. Now it's just a matter of placing all of the contacts into here after being cleaned and I'll come back when that's finished off. So I've just propped the um, base up on the on a few cassettes here, another good use for cassettes apart from listening to them and just a matter of cleaning placing just like so I'll spare you the boredom of going through all of that and I'll be right back so there we go with all the contacts installed there in hindsight, I probably should have put the key, the spacebar key, installed that first because that's a little bit tricky with the wire and I'm likely to upset some of these. Just watch me fail. <laughs> Actually, take that one out. And should be able to flip this no ah I wonder it's close it's close there's one side Here's the other side in. Didn't upset too much there with the look of it. Pretty handy. Uh, one there. Space bars looking good. Okay. Now I just have to make sure all of these are in position in their little hinge positions. None of them sitting proud at all I think that's sitting on the key and inside the key is a locator for the spring I'm sure if you can see it down in there it's got the little hole through right at the base here and the spring sits over that little locator and if it doesn't sit over there, they don't, the springs don't buckle correctly. And that sits on here and then slides. Now this could be quite difficult. because the base has a bow in it here and it needs to be sort of held down both sides it's probably something two person job just about but let's see if I can locate maybe one side one end in 
spacebar is sounding good, so that's located. So I'm just going to try and locate this end, this edge here, just by bringing the base this way to locate it under these slots, just ever so slightly, and then I might be able to get the other side done. So that's actually held in this side, and if I gently bring it over and I just want to be careful that I'm not upsetting any of those keys either. Just have to prop it up on these cassettes here because the um, otherwise this, the springs will push the little contacts out. Everything looks okay. Try that again. One edge in there. And then if I can just keep... Oh, that's That's tough. Well, I've finally worked out a way of easily doing it. Unfortunately, I didn't record it because I was struggling to um, even do it that way. But what I did is I put this surface here up against a ledge, a bench, and so the bench top was pushing against this black piece pushing it that way and then I just used a bit of uh, weight on here to push this plate this way oh my while well, I went down and um, pushed the the plate down under each one of these lugs as I um, applied a little bit of force this way and it just popped into place so uh, hopefully all the all the little actuators are in place. I know the spacebar sounds good. So now it's just a matter of putting the keycaps back on. So I'll go ahead and do that. Just referring to my other camera here where I had a photo so I can see What's what there? Okay, the cat's turned up. It's going to make this job a bit harder, isn't it? Hey, eh? all right. Not to mention the fact that you're dropping fur all into the keyboard, Molly. Now number two. That's escape one, two. Get that in there. Give it a bit of a wiggle. Seems to work. Two. There's a one. That's good. Four. Good. And the final key. Okay, we've got the lower casing here and to put the board back in we go in at the top here and then the bottom should just slide down sit down on the base there and that's nicely lined up there get those screws back in now just a handy little tip when um, Putting these sort of self-tapping style screws back into plastic is you really want these threads to follow the original threads if possible uh, because if they don't they can cut a new thread sort of in between the original threads and eventually it'll just strip the um, uh, thread out of the plastic so good little tip is to just get your screw in 
there and reverse the screw so anti-clockwise until it drops in like that I felt that actually drop in that's the threads aligning then you can start to do up the screw you'll know if it's not right because if it feels quite tight to do up it you'll know that it's it's uh, sort of cutting its own new thread which you don't want to do and the key to that is just to be quite gentle when um, screwing those up shouldn't really have to put much force into it uh, this one here do the same screw that down firmly not too tight doesn't really need to be too tight you don't want to go too tight and strip the thread out so just just firmly there this cable here and we've got the locator pin underneath there and that goes to the bottom so plug that in like so just clip the little clip the little clip in Retaining clip, one side. That other one's going to be hard to get to. Uh, maybe I should do that when it's out of the keyboard. There we go. It's in there. And then um, this, this here slides into a little slot down in here. And that goes under, that cable goes under, that just slips in nicely there and then the little strap screws on there that doesn't need to be overly tight either just tuck this little piece of foam sort of fabric there protecting the board tuck that in there now I was going to try and sort of hide you know maybe cut this uh, Sora's converter down uh, make it narrow and get it sort of hide it down under here um, but I actually quite like having it up on the keyboard. I've, I can see the num lock and the cap status, the LEDs there. So I'm going to um, keep that like that. I might just uh, shorten this uh, cable here. This was really just a test to make sure it worked. So I might just, you know, bring that back here, resolder that onto here. And then um, that will just make it a little bit tidier. But um, today I'm just going to put it back together and make sure everything's working. So that cover slots down into there like so and that should push down easily there. Just got to be careful with these clips. They are very close to breaking off completely. Every time I do this, I worry that I'm making it worse, but seems to be holding together. There we go. Cable joiner here. I'll tuck that down into there. And I'll attach the Sora's converter and um, do some testing. Yeah, you can see with this big blue cable here, it's quite bulky. Uh, I might just leave that out like so, just in the meantime. 
attached to there and then a um, just a standard USB uh, A to mini B plugs in there and then you can plug it into any computer really with USB so pretty handy now that's it ready for testing Right, got the Model F plugged in and everything seems to be working fine there. So all the keys seem to be working. Yeah, so looking good. I do take back what I said before about the Model M and the Model F being similar in uh, volume. They aren't really. The Model F is still louder. As a comparison here. Okay, and the Model M. Yeah, a bit more clattery, I'd say, the Model F. Yeah, the Model M's a little more muted. Probably better for an um, office environment. <laughs> so I might take that one to work and uh, that might not uh, annoy the co-workers so much. Although... Uh, some of the typing I hear on the modern keyboards is quite noisy too. Yeah, that's all up and working there. You can see the num lock status there. Toggle switch. And you'll also notice uh, num lock on the Model M there. And uh, caps lock also. I didn't bother with scroll lock um, LED on on this you can hook the scroll lock light up I didn't bother because I hardly ever use scroll lock but you can see here that it's lit on the Model M there yeah really high, highly recommend if you can get hold of a Model F highly recommend it really nice keyboard uh, so apart from those um, the, the layout is quirky I must say but you yeah, get used to it after a while next job to do will be to maybe Tidy this up a little bit, make, uh, might make that um, a little bit better, a bit tidier. So, um, yeah, and I've actually got another keyboard as well that I'm going to do a Sora's converter. I'll uh, link the uh, site in, in the description for the Sora's converter. Quite handy for, um, obviously, you can't plug these directly into a PC even though I mean they're obviously not pin compatible but even if you did convert that to the likes of PS2 um, the protocols that these keyboards output are not compatible with the modern PC so that's what the Sora's converter does is it converts this um, protocol these older keyboards uh, Model M will plug in directly um, the Model F won't being an AT I think it's AT keyboard and um, the Model M will plug in directly, so this particular version I've got here is a PS2, so I just run a PS2 to USB adapter and it plugs uh, in directly. Uh, I don't do a lot of gaming anymore, but from what I've found with the Model M is that um, the if you're playing, say, a first-person shooter and you're using the cursor keys or the... Um, any key really for instance and you're just in run or walk mode uh, with the key constantly down so your W for forward if you have that constantly down um, eventually you'll just stop walking and then you have to release the key and, and hit it again so 
it there is some issue there something to do with the n key rollover um, so n key rollover is to do with how many keys will be registered if you push more than one key at a time uh, whereas with the Soros converter it handles the n key rollover and um, you know so allows you to push more than one key at a time and um, so the source converter I think will also sort that problem where uh, you know the uh, key stops responding after a certain amount of time in games not really a big problem if you just type in but um, yeah I have another keyboard uh, similar to the Model M it has a DIN socket and the Soros converter has instructions for uh, you know the RJ11 type here the and the DIN socket as well so and PS2 um, so my son also has a Model M he does a lot of gaming and that problem with the key releasing itself um, is, a, is a problem for him so yeah I'll be doing a Soros converter for him as well so yeah I might even uh, record the process so yeah thank you very much for watching